So we start off with Weasel and Measley drinking from the half-frozen lake. Yeah, I'm sure that will do wonders for you, drinking water as cold as that with little bits of ice and bacteria in it. I mean, it's not exactly like you're the Great Bewilderbeast. <coughs> Nearly got all of them now. Can't wait to get the full set. Anyway, Scarface comes back trying to do the best impression of Mufasa that he can. Oh, I thought we had an agreement, Weasel. You wanna waste my time? Okay. I call my lawyer. You didn't tell me about the raid. What raid? The raid your friend, Fox, led on the farm last night. Did he? Don't pretend you didn't know. But I didn't! Then you should have known, shouldn't you? Why do you have to talk to me like that all the time, man? Right? Like I gotta know something. It's your job to know, and then to tell me. Oh, come on, Scarface, give it a break. That's probably only just healed. And I don't think her NHS is cleared up either, so she's probably got to go through the rest of winter without any bandages, you asshole. Oh, did Scarface hurt the little weasel then? Well, the little weasel had better be very careful. Or else Pop goes a little weasel. Ooh, that was good. I didn't know I could do such a good Scarface impression. I want to know anything and everything that goes on on Farthing Land. Do you understand me? You'd better. So after Scarface leaves, Weasel apparently gets her second wind and her arm heals up completely and she decides to shape herself like an inverse letter G and insult Scarface when his back is turned. Which has got to take some serious gonads, I have to say. However, after Weasel says that she doesn't want to squeal on Fox, Measley brings up a very good point. Why not? It's him or you. But I can't. Then Scarface will have you for breakfast. <laughs> Suppose I get right out of Fox's way, stayed off farthing land. You know, I, I mean, I can't tell old Blue Bot what I don't know, can I? That's what you just said to him a minute ago, and look where it got you there. Didn't help you just now. He said it's your job to know. I mean, you're supposed to be his spy, Weasel. Exactly. Clearly Measley is the brains of this relationship. And also the coward, given how many times he scarpers whenever danger shows up. So after Measley tells Weasel that he's going to avoid her to avoid getting into trouble. Oh, and by the way, shame on you, sir. Stand by your woman and defend her when danger comes. Hell, she's more of a man than you anyway, so she'll probably be the one fighting off the danger. You know what? Stay away. It probably is the best solution. We then cut over to Maul, who then subsequently comes across, well, his fate. And people say that love is blind. A bit ironic when it comes to these two. Oh, I'm sorry, have I given it away yet? Yes, this is going to be Mole's eventual mate, who he basically spends all of his time with during the winter. Now, in the show, she's referred to as Mirthful, but in the books, she was known as Mateless. Yes, that was her real name. Rather cruel, I must say. That's like calling me nerd who sits in front of a camera talking about nothing all day. So why do I seem so miffed that these very two shy and lonely characters have found love in a hopeless place? Well, I won't spoil that just yet, but let's just say that it takes it in an area and does things to Mole's character that I'd prefer not to happen. And it really makes things awkward and upsetting in the grand scheme of things. Seriously, the last time I was in a room with Mole, I was like, you wouldn't believe the shit you said to me last night. I had to walk out of the room. I was that scared. Anyway, the main story finally proceeds in the scene in which Al flies over the warden's cottage and sees him being driven away by an ambulance. Well... Maybe he's just got frozen fever. That can be a killer, you know. Oh, and I'm still not ticking that off the list, by the way. There's clearly a better frozen joke in there somewhere. I just can't find it yet. The warden has gone. What? Are you sure? He was taken away. He looked very ill. I can't believe it. Chew hysteria. What's going on? Our protector, the warden, has gone. Oh, no. What are we going to do with Fox? Go, Hannock! Did you say the warden's gone? No, I said the moon was made of green cheese. Is it really? <laughs> Vol has been found dead. Poor Vol. What, really? Vol's dead? Hooray! <laughs> OK, 
okay, I know this is mean, but you have no idea how much I wanted this to happen in the show. I was waiting for that little firebrand to bite the dust all through the first series, but he didn't. But now, finally, relief. I can only assume that he died from Gordon Brown coughing him up after he tried to eat him. Here's a few policies, watch this. Evolve. <laughs> Although on a bit of a more practical side, it's a bit of a dick move to kill off a major secondary character off screen without that much ceremonious element to it. And trust me, it won't be the last time they'll be doing this either. I don't know. First winter, then no warden. We're dropping like flies as it is. Heaven knows what'll happen to us now. There goes Whistler, looking after Kestrel. The blind leading the blind. Whistler isn't blind. Neither is Kestrel. It was a figure of speech. Owl there, doing her best impression of film brain. However, Fox decides to go off and raid the farm again. Oh yeah, because that went really well the last time, didn't it? You got inches away from having your arse strung up on some lodge wall. Although, bearing in mind, it was a much better raid than this one. However, as all seems silent over White Deer Park... By the pricking of my thumbs, something evil this way comes. And then, a new danger threatened us. Poachers, the scum of Woodland Tales. Yes, poachers have entered White Deer Park with them somehow knowledgeable of the Warden's sick leave, and are taking the opportunity to hunt on the land. Those sick and twisted bastards. I know that sound. It's a gun. Holy shit! Execution style deer? Lighten up, show! <laughs> Don't worry though, that wasn't the Great White, though his day will come soon. Oops, I'm really dropping balls here today, aren't I? Next I'll be giving away that Vixen is- <laughs> So the animals all pull together and try and figure out a solution to their problem. Personally, I'd call the Easter Bunny. He seems to be pretty good at hunting. Maybe he can out-hunt the hunters. The deer shared their hay with the grass eaters amongst us. It's our turn to look after them. I say we set up a watch. Good idea, Fox. I'll help. You? What good are you? Your wings damaged. I don't see with my wings, Owl, and my eyes are fine. You're also not supposed to eat with your feet, but that never stops me. Mmm, cheesy. So with that, Farthingwood Watch is set up. The animals go around ensuring the safety of their kind, Badger demonstrating his creeper skills once again, and Whistler being about as sneaky as Chinese fireworks in a hospital zone. I do have to say, with the settled night depiction of White Deer Park, with the soothing music accompanied with Whistler's tune, it really sets a mood and truly feels like that of a time of night when you're still working and walking around in an abandoned area in the early hours of the morning and everything feels still and calm around you. Or was that just my last Saturday night? Thought you'd like some company, dear. So here I am. My, it's a lovely night for watching, isn't it? Look at that moon. That is truly the look of a man who hates his wife. Next thing you'll know, he'll be trying to bash her head in with a hammer, following the example of Lester Nygaard. Double whammy. What is it? A stoat. A stoat! <laughs> We'd be doing the park a favour getting rid of it. Okay, I admittedly don't know that much about stoats. I know that they're part of the Mustelidae family, which you don't often see in England. But I will say one thing about it here. It mostly just looks like Weasel with a colour palette swap. Gently does it. Oh, there's Fox. How's it going, Fox? Arrgh. Ooh, Fox blocked. Seriously, Speedy, what the hell is wrong with you? As the Slovene once said, get some perspective, woman. I was only asking a civil question. I didn't have to come out tonight, you know. I could have stayed by the pond enjoying myself. But no, I came out here in the cold to keep watch for your friends. I'm too unselfish, that's my trouble. Always thinking of others. Yes, that's me. But I shall know better in the future. Oh! Shag attack! 
Ah, thank you, Whistler. Being the ridder of frustration as always. Look. At what? A tree trunk? Unless you found the mystical land of do as you please, hidden within the faraway tree. Oh, no, it's just poachers. I'm never going to get to do the saucepan dance. Wait. Loud, obnoxious, metallic noises that make you go deaf? Just go to a nightclub and you'll get that with jello shots to boot. So Fox goes off to warn the stags of the poachers, whilst trying to imitate every publicity shot from a werewolf movie ever. Sadly, this doesn't really work too much and JESUS! Right in the face?! What is wrong with you?! Oh, and skinning now?! Have I put in some sort of Christmas Brazilian snuff film by mistake?! What the hell is this?! I mean, granted it's not as vicious as the mouse scene from the last series, but it's itchingly close to it. So after the animals are presumably done hacking up their tea, they then get together and try and figure out what to do next. Fortunately, Fox has a Newton moment. Either that or it's just Speedy back for revenge. There must be a way to stop the poachers. But how? Uh, all we can do is warn you. I've got an idea. Of course, I can't believe why we didn't see it before. A giant snowball fight. Unfortunately, the stoke from earlier hears about all of this. And yet, despite the fact that she now has more than enough useful information to give to Scarface and just could go up to him and give it to him easily, she decides to play chicken with Lady Blue in order to give it to them. That's like trying to give information to the police by writing it on your body and then running stark naked past the police office. Although, everyone's made that mistake at some point, right? No. Man, a lot's coming out about my past today. Don't kill me! Don't kill me! Give me one good reason why not. A stoats beneath the notice of a lady like you. True, but in cold weather we all have to take what we can get. No, don't! I can help you! <laughs> you can indeed. I love that laugh. It's like a mix between the Joker and General Melchit. <laughs> you can help me please my mate. He's hungry. Wouldn't it please him more still to have news of a Farthingwood fox? That rather depends. Tell me more. Did you get very far? So Lady Blue delivers the news to Scarface with his typical grumpy response. My love, do wake up. <coughs> no, don't be angry with me. I've brought you news. I'd rather have a meal. And I'd rather be sitting on a beach sipping mango juice whilst goldfishes snap at my toes, but we can't have everything. About the red fox. He's got a scheme to stop the poachers. What? Why didn't I hear about this? Where's Weasel? I buried those cockroaches! Ho ho ho, now you're for it, Weasel. Weasel? Where are you? Everywhere. I'm a ghost in the fog. Almost done now. I haven't asked you anything yet. Tell me about the rabbits. Tell me about the rabbits. I, I still don't know. Do you know what a hush is? That's a pig. The dog flies straight. Neither do you. This plan of Foxy is to catch the poachers. I don't know anything about it. Why don't you believe me? <laughs> Think you can run away from me, do you? Man, Scarface is really homing in his intimidating image today, isn't he? Maybe that's like his Pokemon ability. Be careful, Weasel, your attack stat's just gone down. Though that's quickly ruined by the image of Scarface slipping on the ice. Man. Him and Raoul Duke, they really need to get themselves some golf shoes. Where are some golf shoes? Otherwise we'll never get out of this place alive. So we then cut to the next morning and it's made clear that spring is on its way. Man, that was a quick winter. Are we in Narnia all of a sudden? So the animals now prepare for their big plan. It's now or never. Uh, 
We must organize the sentries. I trust Whistler will keep Speedy well away from the scene. But we must have Whistler. We need everyone we've got, now that the mice and voles have gone. Oh, that reminds me. Wait, you can't just skip that over? Gone? Where's he gone? Is he dead? Because Mr. Mouse was the only one still alive out of them all. Or has he just moved away? And if so, dick move guy, you just moved away from our home you just spent ages getting to. Sod it. I'm adding him to the counter. Man, we are really racking up the bodies here today. So Fox charges Kestrel with Lookout and Hare with Early Warning. Meanwhile, Weasel does her best impression of Ralph the Wolf in trying to avoid Scarface. Ouch! Hello, old friend. I'm no friend of yours. I'm a ghost, Bosch. No, you're not. You're Weasel. Oh, why don't you leave me alone? But, but I've got to tell you about Fox's plan. We need you to keep watch at the other side of the pond. Go away! So with Weasel out of the picture, the rest of the animals get themselves to their positions to engage their plan. We then get ourselves a rather tense situation of the animals taking every precaution to the plan, of which we still don't really know what it is, but we're about to see it unfold before us. Ow! Excuse me, but I felt something. It's them. I'm sure it is. Kestrel's seen them too. So Kestrel goes over to Fox. He goes to the deer to warn them. He tries to draw the hunters away and Weasel gets herself into some wily coyote hijinks. The fox gets hunters' attention and then makes them give chase with the rifles. It's a rush through the forest and the heat is on the animals all the way. He then draws the hunters towards the deer who are across the lake of thin ice. The deer then take cover as the hunters draw closer. Then Kristoff runs across the ice whilst Anna is freezing to death. Elsa is under attack by Hans as the kingdom watches in horror. The hunters then come onto the ice but Scarfer and the first time eating Fox in person blocks his way. But as he falls through the ice, Fox drifts onto a small bit of it as Olaf is swept away by the wind. It's all one big insane chase sequence until finally... <laughs> Full house. <sighs> so... The animals get back together to celebrate their victory, except for Scarface, who is understandably pissed about the situation. But Fox and Vixen has some interesting things to discuss in their Earth. Well, it could have been worse, couldn't it? Of course I'm glad. It's just... Oh, nothing. You are a funny little thing. It's not like you to be nervous. Well, perhaps it's because I'm going to have cubs. Well, this episode certainly went out of its way to go with some excitement. Scarface is truly coming into his own as a true enemy now for the Farthing Woodlot. Plus the feud between him and Fox is beginning to become physical, which will pay up later on, and his treatment of Weasel is truly a cruel sight. It makes you want to see the guy get what's coming to him even more, but at the same time, his despicable nature makes him surprisingly watchable. He's a lot like Tuco from Breaking Bad in that regard. However, the true shine in this comes from the trained strategy and skills demonstrated on the surprisingly clever and effective plan. Almost all of the major and some of the supporting characters get a chance to show their worth, and it really comes through, and it may be the biggest animal's feeling of triumph yet though that will be up soon, trust me. And this one was kind of ruined by the lack of gravity given to the moment by some of the characters injecting lame comedy, or just being plain idiots during the scene, though the awesomeness comes through in the end regardless. However, the one thing that really held this episode back was the excessive gore. I've always stood by this show despite its dark moments because, for the most part, I feel like it's warranted to show the harsh, dog-eat-dog -dog ways of nature. Even on concept, showing humanity being cruel to animals is fine if it's controlled, especially since hunting is a terrible thing and we need to let kids know that. But when you're this intense and nearly exploitive about it and its levels, it becomes too much. You risk alienating kids if you do this, and while granted these weren't major characters, it's still disturbing regardless. 
though it does get a little better from here, but we've gotten very close to mouse shish kebab in terms of the tone. Which is a little ironic given that this episode has half of the title of that episode, and it's about half as violent as well. Overall, that this was a mostly enjoyable episode, and a good one to close out the episodes that actually take place within the seasons of winter, hence the complete list up there. But, as I said earlier, and because of that, spring is coming. <laughs> Now for something completely different. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff I have to do to train up my voice to do certain types of sounds and voices. It's very, very frustrating, but it gets the job done.